Hey, what's up? This is Kevin from Kevin's Barbecue Joints, and I have a fun one. It's with Wyatt Fields. He's from Breakwater Barbecue in El Granada, California. That is right near Half Moon Bay, a beautiful, beautiful part of California. And uh, Wyatt's such a cool guy. It's, a, it's an interesting one. First off, I have to thank my friend Terry, who I went to high school with. She turned me on to them. I had heard the name, but I didn't really know much about them. And uh, she sent me a DM to check them out. And ever since then, I've been connecting with Wyatt and seeing what he's doing. And he opened his restaurant April 1st, right in the heart of COVID. It's Central Texas style barbecue. So he had grand dreams of people watching him cut the meat and the staff cut the meat and plate everything. And right now they're open Friday, Saturday and Sunday from 12 to 5 or when they sell out. It's 95% to go, but I believe right now as of as of recording this, they're 50% capacity, which is nice. You could actually see the water from inside the restaurant, which is very cool. We go over the menu extensively. They have smoked salmon on the menu, which is extremely unique. He's going to have a lot of local ingredients because there's a lot of farms up there, as well as local seafood because that's the connection. He's had an interesting path to opening this restaurant. I know you're gonna to wanna to visit them if you're up in San Francisco, San Jose, if you're in San Luis Obispo, it's all close. It's a beautiful drive up the coast. Check him out. I can't thank Wyatt enough for taking the time. And the Kevin's Barbecue Joints podcast and YouTube show is brought to you by Treaty Oak Distilling. That's treatyoakdistilling.com. Or you can visit them at their location, 26 acres in Dripping Springs, Texas. You could try their bourbons, their gin, their rum. They have a live fire restaurant and barbecue restaurant called Alice's on property. Tons of cool stuff. They'll be having distillery tours soon. Right now, they're making hand sanitizer. Great company, great people, treatyoakdistilling.com. And I have a website at kevinsbbqjoints.com. Links to this podcast, YouTube show, tons of stuff, content behind the barbecue front line, see what people are doing during these times. Crazy amount of lists. I'm on all the social media platforms at Kevin's BBQ Joints. If you're digging these, please subscribe. That way you don't miss out. But at the end, stay safe. Thanks for listening. Enjoy this one. Hey, Wyatt, what's up? How are you doing? Good, how are you? Good. I'm glad we got a chance to speak, and it's it's under strange times, but you you seem to be growing and working with the times, so let's. I want to get into what you're doing now and, and like what you see for the next few weeks in the future, but yeah. where did you, where did you grow up? So I grew up here actually in uh, Half Moon Bay. There's like, it's kind of like in San Diego County where you have like Oceanside, Encinitas, yeah. you know, Del Mar. So there's a bunch of little towns within Half Moon Bay. Okay. I grew up in uh, Montero, which is just about 30 minutes south of San Francisco. Oh, what was that like? Uh, it was pretty mellow. Yeah. <laughs> Not a lot going on, but um, it was good. If you like, if you enjoy mountain biking, surfing, fishing, anything like that, it's awesome. But, uh, if you don't do anything like that, it's probably pretty boring for you. Did you feel secluded? Like, how far away are you from, like, major cities? So, Half Moon Bay is north of Monterey. So, it's smack dab in the middle between San Francisco and uh, Santa Cruz. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, it's, it's, it's pretty accessible, you know. But if you're, you know, growing up, before you get your driver's license, it's pretty limiting. You yeah. Know? So, great place to grow up. It's beautiful. I, I, I used to, in a past life, sell furniture to hotels. And I had yeah. to go to something, Carmel, like, it's the... Carmel Highlands or, or so, what is it? There's something that was like on the bluffs and they had me stay there for three days to like deal with the furniture. And it was the most beautiful nice. view. And I'm like, I don't want to even leave. <laughs> like, <it's so> <laughs> and all the trees, yeah. like I love those. I don't know. And there's a, there's a bunch of eucalyptus, but all those are imported back in like, I think it was like the fifties. They put a bunch of eucalyptus uh-huh. trees everywhere. And like, anyway, yeah, it's, I think those are fun. called, I, I had met someone in, from Australia and they called it, they're called ghost trees in Australia and they were imported, I think, from Australia. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Like there's a reason, there was something, re- like some reason, like in trade, they brought a lot of eucalyptus trees. I don't know if that's a variety up north, but to California, yeah. it's just bizarre. Too. There's a shit ton of them and they leave <laughs> stains on your truck. But <laughs> Yeah. They, and I, I think I'm highly allergic to it. But uh, it's, it's, so then gr- growing up there, did you end up, because... How did you get into the cult? Because I know you had a cater, you were part of a catering business in San yeah. Francisco. Did you go to culinary school? Um, I went to like a little tiny program, um, but I always worked in the industry ever since I was around 14. I got a job at this place called, it was called the Chart House. Oh, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, we had them down here too. Yeah, right. There's one, I think in like uh, Del Mar, is it or something mm-hmm. like that? I think that? there's a very few left. There was one that was on like near Malibu. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I worked there and that was just such an awesome place to work and then met a lot of friends, learned a lot. And then I kind of just 
took my little journey, moved down to uh, Southern California after high school, okay. worked like a sales rep in the surf industry. Oh, cool. Did crab fishing. I was a crab fisherman for a season out here on the boats and then kind of worked my way back into bartending. And But I was always into cooking. I always kind of liked that aspect of it. So I did a, a short little cooking program up in uh, Berkeley. Okay. Just a little tiny, tiny school called Kitchens on Fire. And then... Um, yeah, I went to like a little culinary school in Thousand Oaks that was like a tiny place, but they were connected like... Wolfgang Puck somehow, but like it was tiny, tiny, tiny. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was something where I could work. You know, I could keep my bartending job, pay my rent, and then still go to school, learn some things. Oh, that's smart. And I was staging at the time, doing a stage at a butchery in San Francisco, and ah. then also staging at some place called uh, the Pacific Union Club, which is downtown in uh, like a hardcore French club where you get yelled at all the time. <laughs> what an but experience. I learned a lot. <laughs> yeah, you've added a interesting road. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So it was cool. I learned a lot about like high end, like high volume catering from that spot there. And then kind of took what I did there and then uh, just molded it into my own little mini catering company where I did friends' weddings and stuff for fun. And then it basically started to get to the point where I was taking every single weekend off from bartending. And then I was just like, I got to make a decision yeah. here. So I just went all, you know, uh, full-time catering from then. So How was, when you, I've always wondered, catering weddings, at first, is that stressful? Because it's such an important day to the people. And Oh my God. Yeah. Catering weddings is like, it never is not stressful. <laughs> Even like, to like, you know, every time I do them, there's always something. I guess it's just because I, you know, you got to just, you got to care. Yeah. <laughs> and I was at every <laughs> single one of my events and it's just, you know, it's someone's big day. Mm -hmm. You want everything to be right. Not only, you're not really necessarily, you know the food's there because you've already been doing it, but you you got to worry about employees showing up on time, sure. you know, that. So there's so many different, you know, the pack in, pack out, getting the food there, also setting up. But yeah, it's stressful. The tension <laughs> level's always like a little bit higher at a wedding. And, and then you're dealing maybe not with the couple, but with their planner maybe, or their relative who's a planner or something like oh, that. Oh, the planners, are, I've had some, <laughs> some little mini battles with the planners before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I was I was married in a past life too, and, and the wedding planner was just hard to yeah. deal with. I, I uh... hard to deal. With. <laughs> yeah, you get, you get some good ones, and you get the you get the other side of that too. But crazy. so, so the catering business was taking off. So you stopped bartending and did that full time. Yeah, I started doing that full time, and then I I uh, got into different commissary kitchens throughout San Francisco. Spent my time there, and just kind of you know uh, wanted to see if it was going to be a viable business, and it was. But I was kind of getting to the uh, you know the glass ceiling so to speak or something where it was just i was sharing with bakers you know other catering companies which is great because you're meeting a lot of people but at some point you know you get your little space off to the side and here's your rack here's your little space in the walk-in and you can't really yeah it doesn't feel really and so and at that time i was getting heavy into you know the barbecue and all that type of stuff so you need a lot of space you need walk-in yeah. space you got briskets, you got pork, ribs, all this stuff. That so were you space. offering that in the part of your catering menu was barbecue? Yeah, yeah, oh. no, it was heavy barbecue. Just classic coastal, coastal style dishes. You know, a little bit of new American stuff. We had a lot of like heavy appetizer stuff as well, which is finger foods and. Gotcha. But yeah, it was barbecue centric for the whole time. Pretty much, we were doing native catering. What were you cooking on? So I had like a, I had a this. Uh, Cookers called uh, Pits by JJ in Texas. <laughs> I think, yeah, I've heard of that. No, I've heard of that. Yeah, it was awesome. They they delivered that thing, and it was like I think it was like a two fifty or something. I still have it. I okay. use it in my backyard. Yeah, it sounds like a perfect and, back ride size. Yeah, it was great. So I would do a bunch of stuff in that. I obviously had the commissary kitchen to do all the other stuff, and I had a, also an Argentinian grill that I was doing a lot of stuff on. Oh, as that's well. cool. That's really cool. Do you, yeah. Are you going to incorporate that later on, do you think, in some of your stuff now? Or? Yeah, no. I mean, I would love to. We just don't really have the space. We have a really small kitchen back here, okay. and then we're kind of smack dab in the middle of some apartments. And so the yeah. outdoor cooking is a little, little challenging, but okay. uh, I would love to. If we, had the, if we had a shot to get it at a grill, I would just I would jump on it. Yeah, that's such a great way to cook, and it's uh, it's just, it feels like not, not tribal, but it feels like this the natural way to cook for – Yeah. You know, Love it. I love it. So how did you get to this? Like, did you always aspire when you had that? Did you think, I want to have a barbecue spot someday or some kind of trailer or something? Or it kind of just goes back to my hometown here in uh, Half Moon Bay. There was no real barbecue here. I think back in the late 80s, 90s, there was, this, there was a little tiny barbecue spot here in town that everyone really loved, but then it faded away. Okay. And then there's just been a giant gap ever since then. So I just felt like it always you know it always had the need for for barbecue you know real texas style barbecue but i didn't want to come in and just cook on a gas you know 
smoker and do that whole thing. So I was like, it's got to be the right opportunity. The place I'm in now is an old brewery. It was called Hop Dogma, which is like a little micro craft brewery. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah, they took off. And long story short, I kept in touch with the landlord from here. I said, hey, you know, if you guys ever have you know, a vacancy, can you please keep me on the list? And lo and behold, I was the first one on the list. So she called me up and said, hey, if you want us to talk about this. And uh, yeah, so we lucked out and she called me up and it was a crazy long journey of permits and when did that when did that permits when did that start because it's, it's interesting because a lot of people who listen to this and watch these are either starting out or interested in starting out how long was this whole process to you actually opening well it would have been a whole lot easier if there was a kitchen inside here but there wasn't basically we had to do the plan submit you know get all of our comments back and then go ahead and submit again so probably a little bit over a year before we even got the permit to build. So, Gosh, that takes time. Yeah, and it wasn't just that. It was just the communication. The whole process was just, at times, it was just maddening, you know, because you weren't getting calls back. And I'd go down there in person, and the guy would be in the back. And like, well, he's here, but he can't talk. And I'm like, oh, that's so terrible. What am I doing? Like, did I piss someone off? Like, what's going on over here? You know? Oh, I but know. Oh, gosh. We had to hang in there. And then luckily, I have really good partners that have been patient. We just kept going forward and trying not to get too discouraged. And then eventually, right as I was, like, ready to throw in the white flag, like, I just, you know, like, we got, we got signed off. Did you have a pit at the time? Had you purchased one from – you got – it's from Harper, right? Yeah, I acquired a, uh, a JNR, like um, an older a JNR. Oiler? Yeah, it's not. A, it didn't have gas. It's just like it just had like the convection switch in it, mm-hmm. but it was all you know all wood fire. And I still use that for all my pork, all my ribs, chicken. JNR is a good unit. That's a I've, oh. yeah. A lot of people use them across the United States, like even California. And that's what I was looking for, just a, like a commercial unit that I had in my old catering kitchen. So I brought that down. So I had that and we were cooking on at my old catering kitchen for a lot of stuff. And then I had my little uh, J, J, Pits by JJ when I needed to do a lot of other things too. So when did you officially open? We officially opened, gosh, April 1st. The timing is so awesome. That's the perfect time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like that's some time to say, hey, here, you take your barbecue and get the heck out of here, you know? You were getting inklings as the time was coming, as you were building, com- finishing out the build out that this is probably the, at least you thinking a lot of to go, right? Wasn't that in your mindset? Yeah, we knew that it was going to be a lot of to go. And the community really helped out right when we were, we started out. We had a, just a huge support from the, the local community just within the, you know, like the mile radius of uh, the neighborhood that's surrounding the barbecue joint. Mm-hmm. So that helped out a lot. Just kind of people, they saw us in construction for like a year wondering, is this place ever going to open? <laughs> I couldn't even go out to my local bars without hearing like, of when are you guys going to open? When are you guys going to open? I'm like, it's coming. Yeah, it's coming. <laughs> But that's nice that people were saying that too, because they wanted it to be open, right? Yeah, no, they're just excited, you know, but it's like me, I'm just, you know, you're just like, we just wanted to get open. So um, luckily we got everything, you know, figured out and it's been tough though, you know, because you, you spend so long taking care of the place, you know, putting your little touches on the inside. You think you're going to have, you know, your friends and family and the community in there to have beers and barbecue. And then all of a sudden you can't even. That's what it's all about too. That's what barbecue. And that's, and that's why I I do these interviews because it's the people and it's the camaraderie and it's the family and the getter. That's what, and that's what food in general is about. But you could have done. (laughs) Could you even at the beginning, could you even have anybody inside? So we had one soft opening, which was just like, I literally just emailed everybody that was on our email list, past catering clients, friends, family. I just said, hey guys, we're doing some cooking and just come on down. So we had one little soft opening and it was awesome. Like we had this whole place filled. Oh, that's cool. Uh, oh, it's so much fun. I was like so nervous, you know. Like, well, of course. Just, oh my God, you know. <laughs> but it went super good. I was up all night, of course, you know, like everybody, like all the barbecue guys yeah, are. Yeah, yeah. But it was awesome. So that was our only time that we actually had people inside. And oh. then the past two weeks, um, with the easing of the restrictions, we have actually, our seating is 24 seats, but then we had to knock it down to 12 to, to distance okay. everyone. So we had about 12 spaces the past two weeks in here. It just felt super good to see people just looking out the window at the water and, and eating brisket. And So how far can you see the water? You could, obviously, you could see the water from? Yeah, it's really cool. Like across the street here is, um, it's funny, it's, it's where I learned to, uh, to surf when I was a little kid. Oh, and, that's cool. And my dad would take me fishing out here and uh, out, out in the harbor there. And oh, that means a lot. It's right there. It's, it's it's a really cool little area right here. And it's it's what's the city called? Is it? It's not. It's, it's actually called El Granada. El Granada. Okay. 
say someone was coming up from Los Angeles, because I want to talk about your menu, uh, yeah. but uh, if someone's coming up, where would they stay? Are there other little motels or seaside hotels? Yeah, or? we've got we've got some really awesome spots to stay. Obviously, in town, the major ones, the Ritz Carlton. Yeah, I know that's, in yeah, the that's, Gulf. I've that stopped stuff. to look over that. Yeah, it's a beautiful property. Yeah. It's so beautiful. Yeah, yeah. It's, an, it's it's super nice. But there's also the beach house. There's a bunch of them right really okay. close by. Really nice places to stay. Yeah, no, it's a good excuse to drive up the coast because number one, you yeah. should. If you've lived in California, I know people that in Los Angeles that haven't driven to Santa Barbara. They keep thinking. Thinking, wow <laughs> that like once you get past like you go over the grade and the, at, you, at your yep. brain it ch- things something changes and then if you get more north where you are it's it's just your like a comfortness so, like there's a your soul is at ease yeah yeah there's some really cool spots especially like i we've been going me and my girlfriend have been going down to um like los alamos and oh. that whole area uh, i love that little zone over there too that's super uh, super that's neat. cool i can't wait like honestly and we've talked back and forth, but I cannot wait till I'm able to come up and, and visit. And I'd like to spend yeah, a couple well. days and, and film your like the process because I think that would be fun to put together for the channel and stuff. But yeah, what was your menu at the beginning? Has it changed? It hasn't changed that much, right? It hasn't changed too much. We've been putting specials on. We've been uh, connecting with like the fishermen. So we do like the obviously the Trinity brisket, ribs, sausage, um, house made sausage, just kind of like a spicy link. Basically, like a 90% pork, 10% beef, nice. uh, made in house. That's huge. That's a big deal. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. I mean, the sausage is like, I almost kind of compare it to bread. You know, you're like noticing, oh, wait, did I, you know, how did I stuff it? You know, what am I like? What's the grind like? Did I mix? It's just so it's like you're always learning. So that's been super fun. Did you contact anybody in Texas or watch any videos or anything to learn? Your sausage technique, or sausage making courses. There's a lot of really cool little uh, hands-on courses here in the Bay Area, especially in Berkeley. There's a lot of. I did a couple classes. Okay, and that then, makes sense. Like charcuterie ones, and yeah, yeah, and then sausage, and then just kind of. I had friends that would show me some stuff in the catering kitchens. There was always like really good chefs. I would be surrounded by so they would give us you know always sharing and that's true and in that in that world that does exist for someone that just jumps into barbecue not from that world. They probably yeah. would have to ask a lot of questions, but you had, yeah, you had people that could, yeah. Yeah, answer. not being afraid to ask the questions and not being, you know, afraid to say, hey, look, I don't know, and you show me. And, and that's what's really cool about those commissary kitchens is you meet so many different, so many different uh, professionals mm-hmm. from like all across industries and stuff. So just, just learning and then trial and error and yeah, stuff. Yeah. Do you have the Trinity with house-made sausage? Yeah, house-made sausage. And then we have, you know, our, our Gold Rush pulled pork, which is just like some rub I've been making ever since like, 2007 when I was doing the same rub I've been using. It's like a Carolina, like a, just a spinoff of like a gold rub. I have my brisket rub. We also do like a pulled pork, a smoked salmon called like the dark and stormy smoked salmon. I make like a dark and stormy cocktail. I don't know if you've ever had one of those. Uh-uh. uh-uh. I don't think I have. It's rum, ginger beer, lime. We have some garlic. Oh, that sounds of, great. Yeah, it's like a soy base, but it's it's good. It's great on the uh, on the salmon. Then we, we lightly smoke it and make like a, uh, like a corn cucumber salad that sounds so good lightens it up a bit yeah we're working on on some different stuff and doing uh, different specials with some uh, of the local purveyors around going to be eventually putting together trays for people with is that the goal like to do it that style or are you doing that trays are you doing trays now or is it mostly to go it's mostly to go and you know it's just it's kind of confusing too because they were not letting us to do like you know the plates couldn't have <laughs> pint glasses and serve beers and so everything was just uh. So mainly we've just been we just been doing just to go trays because ninety eight percent of our customers just are basically taking it to go. Are there local places to eat outside, right? Like there's lots of Yeah, yeah. And we've been pulling some tables out front and then people have been sitting out there, which is kinda nice. It'd be interesting to see salmon on a tray, like a barbecue tray, like setting up a cool platter and then having salmon. It would just be interesting yeah. to the eye. I think I've seen salmon I'm trying to think one other place, like somewhere else. Back east or something, they did salmon, which was yeah. You don't see it often at all in barbecue. No, and, but it's just I have friends that are in the, all over the fishing boats. I have numerous buddies that um, run you know uh, commercial fishing vessels, and so we've been getting such good product that oh. I always want to have like a smoked fish and then do like a little white fish smoke smoked fish salad that we're gonna keep in like the cold case over here and that stuff. That does not suck at all. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so I yeah, I just wanna always have like some type of a smoked fish whatever's in season since we're right here <laughs> yeah yeah no that's no that's smart and it also it sets you apart and shows you know you want to always pull from 
either your tradition or from what from the area. So then what kind of sides do you have? So we have our potato salad. We have our baked beans, which is kind of like a little bit sweet. We do like our smoke our own ham hocks. Oh, cool. Brian smoked those and braised them down with our beans. We also have a beans and greens, which is black eyed peas. We have our local Swiss chard from one of the organic oh, nice. farms down the way. That's really good. And oh yeah, you have to, so much produce up there too. Ah, oh, forgot yeah, about that. Yeah, yeah, we have some. We have some good local farms we've been partnering with. So we braise those down with our our sausage, a little chili flake, a little bit of garlic. Oh, cool. That's been super popular. And our chef, uh, one of our chefs in here, uh, super talented guys, been making this awesome mac and cheese with uh, roasted poblanos and some of our gold rub. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, that's that's been awesome. Then apple cilantro slaw. And then we'll do, uh, we have a barbecue chop salad, which is like same with the shard. We smoke some farro and then, oh. um, yeah, yeah. And put like cornbread croutons with like a nice, <laughs> nice little uh, vinaigrette and add your barbecue meat on top. Oh, that's so nice. So so it all, do you have any desserts at all too? Or are you going to do local dessert? Or? We make an in-house uh, Texas sheet cake, but it's made a little different. It's like uh, with uh, heavy on the coffee and then we make, rum, uh, it's a coffee and rum sheet cake with smoked Cons and smoked sea salt. Oh, that sounds. Yeah. I've been eating one too many of those things. <laughs> I know. I have a friend who, who like who texted me like just like four hours ago. He's like, ah, oh, because of this stupid. He lives up in Seattle. He's like, this pandemic. Yeah. I've been eating all the terrible food. He's like, it's the most comfort. <laughs> he's like, nothing's comforting other than eating bad food, like things that are bad for me but delicious. It's. No. That's cool. Yeah. Wow. That's that's totally interesting. So now, what are your hours and what's what's your goal for? And I guess you can't you can't really predict. And like it's today's mm-hmm. July first, so this might be my air to people in a couple of weeks. But you can't right. predict how like the seating and stuff. But what do you what do you, what's your hours right now? Yeah, so our hours are pretty limited. They started out just being Saturdays and Sundays, twelve to four, and then um, now we're Friday, Saturday, Sundays, twelve to five. Our goal is to be Thursdays through. Sundays 11 to 7. Okay. Kind of do like an all day push just because there's so many people right across the street in the beach. And then, you know, but for right now, we're taking it slow. We're building a really solid crew. You know, we're looking to add on once we get a couple of new employees. And then just a lot of it too is just uh, refrigerator space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's a, especially too with sausage and thing if you're, you want to have. And now, is there, if, will you be doing if you're open that long? Like, a second cook or something or putting, or will you sell out a brisket and you'll still have ribs? You'll sell. Yeah. yeah we're, we're getting, uh, the community is pretty used to just getting on it pretty quick. So we'll, we'll sell out of the brisket and probably is always first, but we'll be doing ribs all day, sausage all day. What, are you doing any sandwiches? Cause that makes sense too. Yeah. Yeah. We've been doing our pulled pork sandwich, the gold rush pulled pork mm-hmm. with the apple cilantro slaw and the gold rush sauce, which is awesome. And then our brisket sandwich, chop, chop brisket, we got hoagie, which is our sausage, just with, oh, cool. on a simple soft bun with sauerkraut, onions, and our ho- homemade pickles, and just like a little grain mustard spread as well. See, that'll be great, too, for later in the day. And then also, you, yeah. you mentioned beer. Can you serve beer? Is that something you could do? Yeah, yeah. We have, uh, we have some really awesome little craft beers around here. I just picked some up from Harmonic Brewery in San oh, Francisco. Yeah. yeah, which was right next to our catering kitchen. Uh, those guys are super awesome. Mm-hmm. And then the old brewery that used to be inside here, Hop Dogma, we carry their beer in here and then oh, a few cool. others. We have Shiner Bach as well. And nice little nod to Texas, yes. Yeah, exactly. We got a fair amount and it's always changing too. Are you getting any inkling? Are you, do you think it'll be shut down, like go back to shutdown or do you, I, mean, I know you're not psychic. It's tough to say, you know, I've been hearing, you hear one thing from one person and then every day, you know, we crack open our email and it's a new set of guidelines. So yeah. we're just, we're just playing it by ear and we're just, you know, the main part is, is just being safe with our employees and then the customers yeah. that are coming in the door, taking the precautions and then adhering to the guidelines, you know. And with your experience, you know how to keep clean and how to, I mean, how, like the guidelines. And so you, you already probably had strict guidelines to begin with, but it's just that second level that you have to with this. Yeah, the second level for sure. I mean, it's just because the way we have it in here, our restaurant's so small, it's really tough to like distance, you know, because. <laughs> no, I you know, <laughs> Yeah, and we were doing it with the measuring tape. We're like, how are we going to even do this? So we had, originally, we had the counter, the uh, cashier set up right next to the butcher's block. When you go in and you order your meats by the pound. But now we had to drag it all the way up into the front door. So it just is, we're going to probably be dragging it back to where it should be, right by the uh, butcher's block. But we have to get the plexiglass in front of the person and all that. It's changing. It's a challenge, and it's so weird. And, and who knows if 
a year from now, like it won't be like if there's a vaccine or some kind of therapeutic, then all that goes down. I guess you store it. I keep wondering what's going to happen to all this stuff to people. Yeah, have. it's yeah, it's interesting. You know, I was just listening to the governor today and it's just like, you know, what are we are we going back to, you know, March or like, what? I know. It's just it's but, scary, you know, so. but I wonder, too, like, I feel like now we've all been part of this game for a while. So like supermarkets aren't going to shut down, but maybe it'll be like. 15 people in play like it'll be and we i think if we all wear masks and deal with stuff i think it could be doable and, and businesses like at, at least the government say restaurant i thought he was gonna say restaurants are gone like shut down again but you can do right. to go and curbside and yeah i think it'll probably go back to that model if things really get kind of kind of crazy you know and and everyone's pretty much this last couple months have just been they're, they're getting pretty hip to how to how to yeah. <laughs> execute that you know curbside thing mm -hmm. and and what's fun, you know, what's crazy too is that uh, the customers are getting pretty used to it too. At first, it was just really weird, and everyone's a really clunky thing. Uh -huh. But now, now everyone's kind of getting used to it. Everyone's pretty much ninety nine percent, you know, uh, respectful. You still get the one person who's coming in. Always, nothing. always. Regardless of your political views, yeah. just a stupid mask, you know. Come on. <laughs> yeah, do it just to make just to make life easier. And it, but there are people like you can just tell there's agitators in general in life. There's people that I've lived, you know, throughout my yeah. whole life that you just that person just wants to just jab. Oh yeah, hundred percent. People order from what I from what I recall, you order ahead of time, right? Yeah, so we have a pre order option available. We'll send that out on Mondays, mm -hmm. and that usually lasts till late today or sometimes uh, Thursdays. But okay. we usually check in. I just checked them like few hours ago we we're doing like a little fourth of july thing so if it starts to look like it, the capacity on all of our pits is going to be full then we'll just shut it down so I'll, I'll probably end up shutting it down for this weekend probably a little little early okay but generally yeah pre-orders uh monday through thursday for the weekend do you choose a time slot or is that or just a, to a time yeah. of day? okay yeah they can choose a time slot and it's friday saturday or sunday pickup okay. so they can and, and um choose their day and their time and then, which makes it nice, you know, so they can just come in and just grab and, and, and go, which yeah. is which is cool. And you can order gift cards, too. Yeah, gift cards. But it's just, uh, it's been nice to the last few weeks to actually see, because we wanted to bring the whole where you see your brisket being cut. No, that's, you get, yeah. Yeah, you get to choose your slice. And it's been, it's been interesting seeing the community. This is not a real barbecue-heavy community, but now they're starting to go, oh, can I get fatty? Can I get lean? And oh, we're seeing so all great. the great. That's like, great. Yeah, you guys, right on. <laughs> yeah, they, and it takes time. Like I worked at a restaurant here in Sherman Oaks after I lived in Texas, and it even it's just you just eventually you, you're training the customers to understand because that type yeah. of meat market style isn't we're not familiar here in California with that. No, 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 and it's it's interesting because now we got some loyal, really loyal customers down here, and just you know, and they're they're on it. They're they want to get their brisket, and they're they're ordering you know half lean, half fatty. Oh, that's it's just killer. Half that yeah. makes me that makes me really happy. When did you get the new pit? Um, uh, Harper, um, I spoke to Drew. I actually saw it was funny. It was before he got. I mean, I'm sure he was pretty damn popular down where he's from. But it was uh, I was through Craigslist. Actually, I saw it. I was like, "What is this ad?" And this pit looks exactly what I like. What I wanted. I just wanted like a traditional, nice offset. I, I was you know messaging a few other uh, other pit builders, but yeah. I came across Drew and. We ended up talking and we clicked right away. He's just, you know, super nice guy. Clicked right away. He's just such super easy to deal with, really easy to talk to. And yeah, we just, uh, I saw what he did for Helberg. He put that thing on a trailer, which was like, I was doing drawings of like how I wanted it. And I saw that picture of Helberg. I'm like, throw that drawing in the trash. That's, that's what I want. That's awesome. Pretty much make that same thing with a few minor tweaks. And Is that uh, the one yeah. that Helberg had recently had a photo with his kid with, uh, with Wayne, I think. Uh, I think so. Something like that's a 500. Like a Father's Day. It. Yeah, yeah. Is there a 500 too? Yeah, mine's a 500 in a, in a, um, on a trailer, mm -hmm. like enclosed with the door. It's got the lights on it. Where I'm at right now, we can't necessarily just pull the trailer off and smoke in front of our restaurant. There's a lot of like apartments and housing. And How do you manage that? What is, is it somewhere else? We have a little, we call it the little secret yard, but we, uh, we have a little boat yard down where I where I live and um, it's okay. gated and stuff so you know it's the catering site that we uh, no that's it, it's because right now it's and it's not like you can't legally have a pit cooking right where you are probably I'm sure so. no yeah I mean pretty much when we when we have done some cooks 
in the backyard. It's 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 been uh, everyone's been really cool, but there is always it, all it takes is that one person. Exactly. Just, yeah, we've been you know we've been doing our brisket in there. He's, we got sausage racks as well. So uh, it's just yeah, using a nap kit is just like therapy for me. I love going into that thing every day and just uh. smoking and and it's only a, it's only less than a mile away. So we just do our little transfer transfer the briskets back and then yeah. No, yeah. there's spots there's spots uh, there's some spots that even like in Canada like in Toronto they'll cook at one location and then they'll shuttle it off to two different spots because it yeah just, that's, it that's what we got to do yeah and then we have the jnr we could even get them to the wrap you know get them past the stall oh, and then we'll bring them the mm-hmm. you know it's kind of tough to have some guy back there for 14 hours doing a brisket cook and it's just like all right wrap them up let's go let's finish them off you know if yeah. we have to I'm so happy for you and it's and seeing the photos online it seems like people are really taking to your idea and it must feel good that you know this is what this was an idea and you wanted it to work and it feels like it's working and that must be fun. Yeah. yeah, it's it's fun. It's you know, it's stressful, challenging, yeah. but super rewarding at the same time, you know, just getting to just to have the place open and and build a little team over here and just to have the community come and support and just uh, yeah, it's been great. That's awesome. Just to wrap it up, if you're in San Francisco or San Jose, how long would it take you to get down there? San Jose is about with no traffic, I probably about 45 50 minutes okay. just you can give or take an hour okay. uh san francisco is only 30 minutes really yeah it's it's really easy straight down the one and yeah we're here yeah you guys got some i've been following like it's i've been totally embracing the whole craft barbecue scene you know at first sounded kind of nerdy but i think it, now it's just like it's it, that's a good term because you really got to differentiate yourself because these guys are cooking everyone's cooking on offsets and we're cooking you know all wood fires so that term crafts i think is really important yeah. to, for the california guys to separate them from the uh, the big chains and, yeah. and let people know that they're doing the hard work and they're they're there in their pit rooms and and uh you know moves and i see heritage and i see all these i've never met them but i just like yeah it's just super interesting. you love them they're they're great great people i was just texting michelle and andrew like three hours ago when Newsom was talking, I'm like, I, cause yeah. they're, you know, they're kind of, they're set up on that same, the model where you pay ahead and then they, yeah. they have curbside only because they just don't, they yeah. can't, can't do a brick and mortar right now. But yeah, there's, there's a, it's starting to grow more of a scene. Like I, and I've been doing this for about 10 years and it hasn't, it's, this is now the, the time, the Renaissance, these last couple of years where it's like, okay, there might be a chance that we have something here, which we should, cause there's people. Yeah. California, it. we got, I became pretty close with uh, Matt Horn. Mm-hmm. We became really good friends here this last year, working together and hanging out. Him coming down and, and uh, having little vacation days down here. And so his his thing he's got going on is really exciting too. Yeah. He's out in Oakland, and we keep in good contact. So California's got a pretty mm-hmm. cool, neat little thing happening right now. I'm pretty excited to be a part of it. You know. Yeah, and there's a lot of little guys too that have pits now that are buying them from Fat Stack or from. Uh, harbor yep. or whomever and so you know that yeah. i think there's there's a chance and there's some people too that are cooking at home that are cooking on like 500s that are doing yeah. some really good stuff yeah yeah i see drew just uh pumping those things out a lot of a lot of uh interesting like a lot of uh a lot of people have been getting these uh these pits and doing some good barbecue out of them it's great yeah i think there's some people that are semi-close to you or up towards you like between yeah. you and me that are just doing it at home but like top-notch barbecue that's just it's just rad that's really cool that's yeah. what i can't wait to get a pit like a little 250 to 500 and and have fun my because it's it, it, there's something therapeutic too about the whole process yeah what do you cook on at home right now i'm just i just have gas i'm at a, an apartment okay. complex so it's oh it's, right yeah embarrassingly but it's like i'm still i'm ah. cooking but i can't do like long cooks right now right yeah. right i've been listening to your podcast for a while before even terry mentioned that she was your friend she's like oh my friend he has this like barbecue podcast i'm like <laughs> Kevin's barbecue joints. I listen to that all the time. Oh, sure. That's cool. That makes me happy. Well, that's... Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you don't know. You're like, is anybody really yeah. listening? I love it. I love your podcast. Cool. And I yeah, appreciate thank what you guys, what you do, just getting the word out for everybody in the barbecue world. And Yeah. yeah. And thanks for um, doing that uh, behind the barbecue front line. I just want to share what people are doing and maybe it'll help somebody that's, you know, struggling in the business. I, ho- I hope they're not, but you never know. Yeah. I mean, it's always ups and downs. So if anyone wants to reach out to me, they can hit me up directly or send me a message or okay. anytime they're in town, I would just love to meet anyone that wants to come by and and cool. uh, get some barbecue and yeah yeah i highly recommend i can't wait for people to come visit you what's and what's all the social media uh it's breakwater barbecue and that's our instagram and then our website's breakwaterbbq.com cool yeah. well have, have a good rest of your week and it was so nice to talk to you and i could see why drew enjoyed talking to you you're 
it's fun talking to you and it, it seems oh, it, yeah. I'm ex- and it's and you're very passionate about what you what you're doing so i'm excited that hopefully this will you know continue to grow and grow and get a chance to have people in your restaurant yeah hopefully we're gonna have a grand opening one of these days we're still waiting but uh when we do we'll we'll uh we'll, we'll give you a holler and have you up yeah let me know ahead of time too i'll promote that so we can see if we can get uh get more people up there maybe some people could road trip or something too yeah that would be that would be great that'd be a lot of fun cool well enjoy your week and uh, i'll talk to you soon Awesome, Kevin. Thanks, man. All right, man. cool. Take it easy.